everyone, so welcome back. Uh, so when I moved to Singapore, a lot of you asked me how did I get the job, how did I find the job, what is the process to go through. So today I'm going to answer the questions that I've received. I've got a note here, I've written some notes. So let's get started because it's going to be long. There will be six sections in this video. So what I'm about to explain will be the things that uh, I went through. I'm not sure if it's going to be the same for other companies, but for mine, this is what I went through. So, right, Okay, so the first step is, of course, you need to find the job. And the website that I went to is Job Street. I went to that website because I'm more familiar to that website. I'm sure there are a lot of websites that you can find a job at, but Job Street is the one that I'm familiar with. So at first, to be honest, I was looking for a job in KK in Sabah, but I could not really find a good one, and there weren't a lot of like teaching vacancies. So I decided to, you know, try my luck, and I move the country section to Singapore, and then I realized that they are hiring a lot of teachers or mentors. So I updated my resume, make sure that everything is fine, everything is correct, and make sure that everything is up to date. So I applied to a few places, like five or six places, and then actually three emailed me back and they asked me to go for an interview. So two of the companies, they asked me to come to Singapore for an interview, but this one, this other one, they asked, they just asked for like a phone interview. So I decided to go for the phone interview because I don't have to like fly all the way to Singapore at that time because I was still working. So my tips is, of course you need to apply to a lot of places, not just one place. It's just, you know, just for like plan B, for backup plan. So apply to many places. So for me, when I did the phone interview, they didn't tell me that I need to do like a video interview. <laughs> I thought it was like a phone call. I was stupid. Yeah, and then they looked through all of my, they looked through at my resume. And then I realized that they pointed out um, the part where I did my internship in London. And I realized that it's very important to you know, grab all these opportunities if you have to go overseas and do something. And if you have like, a, if you have the chance to go for higher education, just go for it, man. Because people will look at it seriously, and they will notice you more. So, hmm. so what to do when you're accepted? So the company called me, and then they're like, uh, okay, this is what I remember. So yeah, you, you've been accepted to work with us, so are you willing to accept? <laughs> I remember at the time I was with my family in Surya Sabah, I was just done with a movie I think, and on my like shopping. And then I was like, mm, I was sitting in front of Upper Star, <laughs> there's like a bench there, and then I couldn't believe my ears. So yeah, and the, the first thing that I asked them is, uh, well, do not be afraid to ask how much are you getting paid because you really need to know your budget and everything since you're moving to another country and you're going to think about all this rent and your transportation, all, the, all, the, all of this budget. So it's important to know that how much you're getting paid. So, so yeah, when they told me about my salary, I think that I can manage to survive here. So I say, okay, so I accepted it. So for a foreigner to work at another country, of course, you need a work permit or work pass. And usually the company will settle it for you. And all you need to do is just to email them all of your documents, uh, your certificates, your education certificates, your passport and all any like relevant certificates that that you think that's suitable for your job and for Singapore there are actually different kind of passes uh, there are e-pass, employment pass I think, s-pass for student pass, work permit um, 
So yeah, after you got accepted, they'll, they will settle all of this work permit for you and you just need to give them your information or your certificates. And then at the end of the day, they will give you this uh, acceptance letter and they will also email you your work permit and they will give you this FIN number, F-I-N FIN number. It's very, very important. So your FIN number is as important as like your IC, your ID, or your passport. So for your work permit card, remember when I say that they will email you a uh, your work permit and also the FIN number. So that is not your original work permit. You will have like a card. It will be in blue color. So this is my work permit. I can't really show you, but that's how it is. Kind of like that. <laughs> So, they will send you another email, another letter to tell you that okay, you have to go to the uh, MOM, Ministry of Manpower, the building there and to, to take picture and to, to look through all of your documents. So when you go there, you need to bring all of your original documents. I have mine here, hold on. You need to bring the original documents and also a set of photocopy of it. And it's pretty strict when I was there. It was like a, in a very in a very compact cubicle with this lady in front of me in a counter. It's a very small space. Like <laughs> you feel like you're being interviewed or something. So when you give this to them, they will make sure that the copy the original copy and the one that you photocopy are exactly the same so it will take some time but you just need to be patient for them until they are done with their work so i actually got into a little bit of a problem because my i don't know my my college certificate i think there's like a hidden letter like inside you can't really see it you can only see it when you photocopy them and then the lady was like, uh, excuse me, these two are not the same. Like, why your original document doesn't have like lettering below, and then the one that you photocopied has like lettering. So, I was confused as well, like, I don't know. <laughs> and then she kept pointing at the sign behind her. It's like a, I forgot the word, but it's like, if you forge a document, if it's not genuine, you will be in jail or you will get fined. And it's a it's a very serious crime here. So yeah, just make sure that when you photocopy your documents, uh, they are exactly the same. Not even one letter different, that's just, you're gonna be in trouble. <laughs> then after they have checked your documents and everything, uh, you have to take your picture. So make sure when you go there, you, you apply your sun makeup, your lipstick, and make sure your hair is nice. So yeah, because it will be in your work permit. <laughs> so after everything, they will mail you the work permit card. So that's when you feel like, ah, I'm finally like a legit worker here. Okay, I'm sorry, I forgot to add that you need to go for a medical checkup. They will check if you have TB, if you're pregnant, if you have HIV, and if your lungs are okay, they will do like a x-ray and x-ray. So yeah, if you're healthy, if you pass the test, the blood test and everything, so you're good to go. When you start working, of course you need to think about where are you going to live. So what I've done is on, uh, was it November, October? October and November, I came to Singapore, flew here after I knew that I got accepted. I flew here to find just to find rooms. I stayed here for about three or four days, and my mission was just to find rooms. So I went to rentinsingapore.com website and I looked through a lot of rooms that I think that suits my budget, and I realized that. The rooms here are so expensive. <laughs> so I went into the website a couple of weeks before I flew here, like three, perhaps a month before I flew here. So I looked through all the rooms and I contacted all the people. So for me, I went through agents and this guy, his name is Jeffrey, he's very, he's very kind. So when I flew here, I already have certain like appointments to meet up with the landlords or the agents uh, or the house owners so 
I actually did a video about it So if you watch that, you're great <laughs> Yeah, so So today, I made up like two appointments About one or two appointments per day And then I just look around and look at the area I make sure that they are nice facilities Make sure that the room is clean And then there's like a public transportation And also I see if suits my budget So once you have decided on a room You need to quickly tell the agent Because there are so many people looking for rooms as well And it's kind of like a first come first serve basis So for mine I was left for only two choices Two or three rooms choices where I've made like six or seven appointments before and then most of them are like already rented out like super fast so the first thing that you need to do is of course to pay the deposit for mine I paid uh, one month deposit including the first month rent so my room is $500 and there's no acorn uh, but the area is great there's a park nearby there's a hawker center just down below the bus stop is also just down below so I think that the place the area is really great so I don't mind paying 500 per month so I paid $1,000 <laughs> for the first month the deposit and the first month of rent so after that I just set in my moving date with my landlord uh, I move in on the 26th of December so they've been really nice to me so I'm grateful so we have arrived to the last section so how much money do you need to prepare so basically let me get my calculator got my calculator here very tiny one so okay I'm going to calculate all these in English and okay, okay I calculated it wrong so I'm going to do it again right so uh, First thing first is my flight ticket. My one-way flight ticket will be about 150 at a time, and then my my rent, my deposit, and my first month rent will be 1,000 dollars. So it's about 3,200 ringgit, and then plus with my budget for the first month, well, you need money to live for the first month. Your food your transportation so I, I brought about $600 so that's like uh, how do you calculate it uh, about 1,900 yes plus minus so yeah basically I need about 5,000 5, over for the first month so that's how much you need to prepare so when I was here on the first month in January I spent uh, about 600 a month for my food food is normally it's less than five dollar each because I only eat like once per day like one full meal per day so I only spend like four to five dollar for one meal every day and it depends on how you spend your money you know so for me I only eat once per day and then I bought um, biscuits to make me full, like make varieties, make varieties, make varieties. It all depends on you how you budget your money. Okay, so now I'm going to answer some questions that I received in my Instagram. Okay, so when when you decide to work there, why Singapore and purpose? <laughs> so to be honest, it's a very spur at the moment thing. I did not have any plan at all. So it was just you know just. <laughs> uh, how you can find work at SG any tips on that so yeah you just just go for any websites any vacancy job websites and just apply 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 and apply and make sure you check your emails currency lifestyle things Singapore got but Malaysia doesn't have <laughs> so the currency here is uh, triple than Malaysia so it's actually pretty good money if you know how to save your money and the lifestyle, it depends on you. For me, I have a very simple lifestyle. I go to work, I come back. Uh, I'll go to work, I tap all some food, and then I come back. Uh, only on weekends, I go out once in a while. But because of this pandemic thing, I don't really get to go out. So I get to save a lot, to be honest. So uh, Money, process, to-do list. Money. What money? What do you mean with money? 
so I've explained the process and to-do list uh, here my to-do list is I want of course I want to travel to many places I really want to fill up my tattoos behind me <laughs> because it's really empty now so yeah that's my to-do list <laughs> Uh, how are you teacher? I'm doing great. I'm doing fine. Hope you are too That's the end of my video. I hope that you guys understand what I'm trying to explain And if it, if you have any question, you can just comment down below. I will definitely answer it. So yeah, good luck everyone Bye Hi guys, so you <laughs> Usually when you want to go to and also they will email you your work permit like a uh,